Hi, I'm Ted Picone, a senior fellow with Foreign Policy at Brookings, and I'm here today with my colleague Diana Negroponte to talk about President Obama's trip to Mexico and Central America later this week. I think the main point you want to think about when the president goes in this part of the world is what does it mean for our foreign policy, our core security interests, and what it means for our partners in the South. Often, we forget about how important these countries are to us. But increasingly, Mexico in particular is critical to America's future, its current and future economic prosperity and its security interests. There are two issues in particular I want to point to, which are important domestic political issues for President Obama. One is immigration, and the other is gun control. These are high on the president's agenda, and he is spending his political capital in the second term to try to move the ball and get results that matter for Americans, but also matter a great deal for Mexicans and Central Americans, who every day are facing the challenge, number one, of finding jobs, and many of them come to the United States to work and sometimes face very difficult circumstances here, and also the violence that Mexicans face at home largely the result, partly the result, of guns that are flowing from north to south. Two-thirds of the guns that are found in crime scenes in Mexico are traced back to the United States, and that's according to U.S. data. So I want to get into some of these issues uh, in our conversation today and turn to Diana and talk in particular about what will probably be the headline of the trip, the economic and trade relationship. Diana. Ted, I'm very glad that President Obama earlier today, talked about the importance of trade and investment in the relationship. Because that trade has grown now, that Mexico is our third largest market. And we are now exchanging goods at $1 million every minute, or $494 billion a year. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. And the interesting thing is that the quantity of U.S. product that goes into Mexican exports back to us. So for every dollar that Mexico exports to the United States, 40 cents is already U.S. manufactured product. So this is a win-win relationship. That's right. That's right. So we need to build and recognize the degree of integration that we have in our manufacturing sector. Where can it go from here? I mean, if it's already that integrated, where are the bright spots that you see there's growth uh, for the United States? Ted, at the moment, we're seeing this principally in the automobile industry. That accounts for the largest n proportion of these good numbers. But there are other sectors we should be looking at. We should be looking at greater integration in aerospace, telecommunications, food products. So I think there is scope to increase this integration much further. One of the real problems uh, that are where the trade issue integrates with the immigration issue is border security. And getting those goods to flow normally across the border at the same time trying to control and um, stop the flow of illegal narcotics, other uh, contraband trafficking. Um, what news might come out of the president's visit re relating to border security? Ted, you are so right to focus on the border, which is a critical logjam at the moment. The proposal which was made two years ago and still needs to be put into effect is the smart border. What do I mean by that? It means that as my truck leaves the factory gate in the center of Mexico, the content of that truck and the security of both the cab, where the driver is, and the truck is assured electronically, a GPS. That truck now needs to move seamlessly, except for a stop for coffee and a pee, right up to Detroit. At the moment, it's still having to stall at the border. But the construction of special roads across the border for this type of pre-cleared truck would facilitate our commerce enormously. Well, this is a big breakthrough um, from the president's first term when 
the reached agreement on the trucking dispute that was left over for so many years. Uh, this was agreed to in NAFTA to allow Mexican trucks to have better access uh, into the United States. And we stalled and stalled and stalled. And it's finally now working, as you said, but with certain controls, um, GPS, uh, et cetera. I think um, there's another issue around border security, which is the ports of entry and making sure that there's a basic infrastructure that the flow can happen. Uh, there's going to be the first uh, railroad crossing on the border, uh, first time in 100 years. And I think that shows that we're trying to invest in the infrastructure while at the same time building the not just the walls, but the surveillance uh, capabilities to make sure that the legal things are flowing and the illegals are kept out. It's the balance that we have to make. The cross-border points, 53 of them, are still few for the quantity of trade which is passing through. But you are right. U.S. citizens are concerned that smuggled migrants, cocaine, marijuana, etc., will be used in those trucks and rail cars to pass into the United States. I've spent time down in Nuevo Laredo and then at Otay Mesa looking, and looking at these problems with the Customs and Border Patrol. They have the technology, they have the manpower, but here is an issue which could be solved. At 8 p.m., that border closes. Why? Because the Mexican brokers do not wish to work after 8 p.m. So that instead of having a 24-hour transfer across our border points, we're only working from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. That is a problem our presidents could solve. Right. So I think um, another area that's sensitive to this border security issue is uh, the flow of people, which we've talked about. But it's a remarkable statistic that under President Obama's administration, there's been a huge increase in deportations, particularly of Mexicans back to their home countries. Now, it's come at a time, fortunately, when the Mexican economy is growing. Uh, and, and therefore able to absorb people back in their societies and get some kind of employment underway. Can you say a little bit more about how Mexico's economy is doing in general? It's growing at 3.5% this year, which is okay. Not as good as last year, where Better it was nearly... Yes. But Mexico has to absorb 1.5 million new entrants into the job market every year. And therefore, that pressure for jobs, good jobs, quality jobs, is going to remain with us for a long time to come. The minimum wage in Mexico is 60 cents an hour. That's too low. In the manufacturing sector, it's $4.5 an hour. So you can see the magnet, the draw effect that a job in the U.S., even if it's mopping tables, would present for a young Mexican. We need greater productivity within Mexico to raise standards of living in that country. And there's still huge numbers of Mexicans, if you ask them, prefer to come to the United States to, to work if they have the choice. But the numbers are also improving of Mexicans wanting to stay in Mexico. And I think it's kind of constant duality of relationships and livelihoods that cross the border is, is, the fu is the current and the future of this relationship and why it's so important that we get it, we get the balance right, as, as you said. There's another part of the story here, which is the Mexico's southern border with the rest of Central America. And it's porous, it's unpatrolled, it's corrupted. Um, and you're seeing an increase in the flow of Central Americans coming through through Mexico. This will also be on the president's agenda, not only in Mexico, but when he goes to Costa Rica for a meeting with all the Central American presidents and the, the Dominican Republic. Mexico's visit will be successful. The visit with the Central American leaders raises questions because you are so right the level of economic development and the strength of uh, institutions is very weak. So we maintain that flow 
of Central Americans seeking decency, even though that trip through Mexico is highly dangerous and many lose limbs and lives in the course of that transfer. Well, let's talk about the security situation that affects both Central America and Mexico. You know, this has been, of course, the number one issue in the relationship for some time, and presidents on both sides want to lower the profile, lower the visibility of this issue. Of course, it will be on the agenda, the main story being the economic relationship. But there are really serious challenges, um, and it has to do with the livelihoods issue, and it has to do with how weak uh, their institutions are. Uh, what do you think that Peña Nieto is going to want to say about how he wants to handle the security relationship differently from his predecessor? Peña Nieto's government has decided that it will shift the focus away from catching drug cartel kingpins to protecting Mexican citizens in their communities. There is also a shift away from the closest collaboration with the US government that has ever been known in our mutual history. So we are watching that re-shifting or transformation of the Mexican security program. Peña Nieto has assured the Americans that he will continue close collaboration but I think it will be of a different nature. Mm. Well, I think it's also interesting to note that the, develop the security systems from the United States to Mexico, which grew so much under the last administration, is starting to decline rather dramatically. And at the same time, assistance to Central Americans is going up. They recognize that they need help. They need the support of the United States. And Mexico can actually be a partner with us and maybe Colombia to try to address some of the failings that we see in, in Central America. So I think that'll be combined, the Mexico-Central America common agenda that we'll see out of the president's trip. I want to thank you so much for your time, and we look forward to hearing more. Thank you, Ted.